हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर सौरभ पटवर्धन फ्रॉम नंदा दीप आई हॉस्पिटल एंड फेको ट्रेनिंग सेंटर एंड इन दिस वीडियो आई एल बी स्पीकिंग अबाउट अ केस ऑफ स्यूडो एक्सफोलिएशन विथ वीक जोन्यूल्स देर इज सम अमाउंट ऑफ एकोडोनेस एंड देर इज अ स्मॉल प्यूपिल सो दिस इज एट ईयर ओल्ड जेंटलमैन एंड आई एम प्लानिंग टू डू दिस सर्जरी विद द सब टीनोनेसिस सो द फर्स्ट स्टेज इज टू गिव little bit of subconjunctal anesthesia and wait for at least 2 minutes so that that area is anesthetized and then i opened the tenon space and i used a blunt cannula to inject 2 cc xylocaine into the retrobulbar space so this is a very easy and very effective technique and uh, completely safe technique avoids glow perforation and we can give it on table after applying the drips and the speculum so and we have to just wait for another 3 4 minutes to have a good effect of anesthesia and then we can go ahead with the surgery now many times i am asked uh, how do you decide whether to keep the bag or you want to remove it and place a iris fixated or a sfi i think the ease of capsule rexis is one thing which i look for uh, when i start the surgery so here you could find that the capsule rexis was fairly easy though of course uh, i could feel the zonular weakness and the lens bag was moving but uh, still it was not uh, that tough so that means i want to keep the bag there so the plan here is to do a feco and if the zonules are good i'll be implanting a three piece iol in sulcus with the iol optic capture Uh, also known as iol trap technique i saw this uh, technique from dr deepak's videos and since then i am using this technique and it's quite good and uh, so if i have decided to keep the bag that means i have to first uh, support the bag with the ctr now i am having little bit of difficulty over here to push the ctr into the bag as you can see here now the it is going into sulcus rather than in the bag and because of the small pupil it is difficult for me to visualize where the ctr is going so i am using now the uh, sinski in the left hand to press down the ctr into the bag now it is going you can see that the, there is movement of the nucleus when i push the ctr in that indicates that it is going into the bag and last part is pushed in using a forceps and now i rotate the nucleus it is freely rotating so that is a good sign indicating that now the ctr is in the bag and it is giving a, some support to the bag now i am going to use 100% torsional here and uh, the first part i want to do a deep trench here I want to keep the trench in the central 4 mm because of the small pupil and maybe I should have used the pupil expander here because uh, there is some amount of corneal haze or corneal opacity so my visualization is poor and this is the first chop which I did burying the tip using the longitudinal power as well you can see the parameters I am going to divide the nucleus into multiple pieces but because of the small pupil uh, i am little bit reluctant to go in the deeper plane and you can see the tip is buried quite superficially into the nucleus and that is the reason why i am not getting a good hold so i am rotating the nucleus on the other side and trying to chop uh, the nucleus into as many pieces as possible again you could see that i have buried the tip quite superficially and uh, the reason is that the pupil is small and i am little bit cautious not to catch hold of the iris so now i realize that i should put a pupil expansion device here and my choice is bhex uh, i feel that i should have put it uh, immediately after doing the ccc that would have helped but anyway better late than never so after injecting ovd in the ante chamber i started inserting the b hex now the first uh, flange which i have inserted 
I should have inserted slightly on the left hand side rather than straight ahead of the incision and uh, that might have helped me in proper positioning of the b-hex so that I could handle the remaining flanges easily. So this particular flange was a little bit at an awkward angle to the main incision as well as to the side incision and I was having trouble to hold it because when I tried to use the forceps to hold it, uh, the forceps were not opening well because of that angle. Uh, so I used some uh, OVD and then I pushed it little centrally using Sinski and now I could hold the flange well and then I could uh, put it uh, over the iris. So now the pupil is uh, dilated and more than dilated what is uh, important or what is assuring to me is that I am not going to catch hold of the iris now when I am going to do the quadrant removal. So for quadrant removal again I am using combination of longitudinal and torsional phaco power. I am keeping the phaco tip right at the center and in such cases where the pupil is small uh, and uh, there are weak zonules, it is important to have complete understanding of the parameters that we are using. So in a normal case if I am going to use 400 vacuum, I know that in this case if I use less vacuum like 350 to 370, I have that safety margin with me. So I am not worried about the posterior capsular rupture here because I know that uh, with this uh, bottle height or the IOP even if I use 450 vacuum it is safer and uh, I have studied that. So I know that if I am using just 370 vacuum over here my posterior capsule is going to be well away from the phaco tip all the time and uh, the anterior chamber will be maintained. So that is the importance of understanding the phaco parameters in your routine cases as well so that you can for the tough cases or the difficult situations like this you know you are confident with your phaco parameters and that's why you can do a very safe and uh, reproducible phaco emulsification surgery in such cases. So just watch how my phaco tip is right at the center of the antechamber here which is the deepest part of the antechamber. And that's the end of the phaco emulsification the, for the IA. Uh, luckily the cortex was not that entangled with the CTR. So I could remove everything easily. And there was very minimal cortex which was left after the phaco emulsification. And it's important to nudge the iris little bit on one side and check for the residual cortex. So you have to do it 360 degree so that you avoid any residual cortex. Presence of CTR sometimes uh, hinders the usual removal of the cortex and in such cases then you have to move the IA probe uh, tangentially rather than centrally. Now the plan is to do as I said IOL trap so I want to place this three piece IOL in the sulcus. So the first leading haptic is already in the sulcus now but what is important is to put the trailing haptic in the sulcus first so I rotate the IOLs gently and uh, now I will rotate the trailing haptic into the sulcus it is important to be very gentle with the IOL positioning here because uh, we don't want to damage more zonules and once the aisle is in place, I will be removing the B-hex. Now removing it is very easy. It's a very thin pupil expansion device. So just making it free of the iris. Also the sub-incisional flange is out so that I can hold it and just take it out. Careful irrigation aspiration is needed. I have used the Hylucoat or Viscoat in this case to coat the endothelium and for that uh, it is must that we do very thorough aspiration of this remaining viscoelastic and because the side port uh, was leaking a bit and the iris because of the small pupil was prolapsing out I removed uh, the instrument from the side incision so that there is no more prolapse and then I hydrated the incision 
AC was well formed and uh, post operative results were excellent for this patient. For more such videos do visit our website and also you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can submit your own videos for review and publishing on our website. Thank you so much.